A jury will hear the closing arguments today in the trial of Nathaniel Veltman. He's accused of murdering four members of the Afzal family in 2021 via hit and run. The Afzals were Pakistani Muslims who lived in London, Ontario. They were out for a walk. Veltman is charged with four counts of terrorism, motivated first degree murder, and one count of attempted murder. For the latest this morning, we're joined by journalist Janella Massa. Good to have you back on your morning. Hi, good morning, Emery. We first spoke at the beginning of this. It's been 10 weeks since jury selection. What has the trial looked like so far, Janella? So it's been nine weeks of trial, uh, 19 witnesses taking the stand, that including, uh, you know, folks who were uh, witnesses at the scene of the attack, uh, police uh, who uh, interviewed uh, Veltman. Uh, we saw evidence, um, including, you know, his uh interview with police when he was arrested, uh, his information that was seized from his home. Um, you know, it's worth noting this is the first time that Canada is seeing a jury consider uh, terrorism charges. Um, you know, the uh, accused has pleaded guilty. Um, sorry, the accused has pleaded not guilty. So mm -hmm. this is the first time this is being heard by a jury. So not just the first degree murder uh, charges, but also the terrorism charges that are having to be uh, tried by the jury. And what kind of evidence was presented against Veltman at the trial? Right. So we heard uh, that he was arrested. When he was arrested, he confessed uh, to to uh, doing the attack, and that's not up for dispute. That's not up for dispute or for debate. Uh, the fact that he was the one behind the wheel uh, that is agreed upon. Uh, what has to still be um, uh, tried is uh, whether or not it was premeditated, and this, this part around the uh, terrorism charges, uh, whether or not he is a, uh, a white nationalist. There was a um, you know a, a manifesto where he, uh, you know, confessed to, or rather where he uh, uh, called himself uh, a white nationalist. He denounced multiculturalism. He denounced uh, mass immigration. Um, so that is a part that's being uh, uh, considered. And we also heard from Veltman, uh, he took the stand himself uh, in defense of himself. Uh, one of the things that they talked about were his upbringing in a, an extremist uh, um, uh, Christian fundamentalist family. We also heard from a forensic psychiatrist called by the defense. Uh, important that he talked about Veltman's mental health issues. He basically said that he uh, was a um, uh, he was on the autism spectrum. He had personality disorder. He had OCD, um, but he d did not uh, concur that he was, uh, you know, in a psychosis or psychotic at the yeah. time of the attack, which kind of rules out the idea that he could be not found not cr criminally responsible. But they are uh, trying to sort of raise doubts. They also talk about the fact that he may have been on the feeling the after effects of uh, mushroom psilocybin uh, forty hours before. And so kind of casting down on his, his state, potentially, you know, pushing this to a second degree murder charge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there were a couple of key elements throughout this trial, right? One was his defense, but of course the other are these charges. Let's talk about that. We have precedent law here in this country. This is the first time terrorism laws are being used to argue a case like this. What's at stake? Yeah, you know, the thing is that terrorism charges don't actually result in harsher sentencing. Uh, ultimately, a first-degree murder charge carries 25 to life. Uh, it's more about sort of the labeling of this, uh, you know, of course, uh, this horrific uh, act uh, where a Muslim family was killed, a nine-year-old uh, left orphaned. Uh, we did not see, you know, terrorism charges brought in the Quebec uh, shooting trial uh, uh, four years before this event. And so, you know, the Muslim community is certainly looking for that uh, charge to be applied, considering the sort of uh, elements around uh, white nationalism uh, that have been brought forward. And, you know, the community obviously uh, feeling that they've had to kind of endure all of this with him pleading not guilty even though that's not in dispute, uh, having to go through all of this and hear his sort of rationales for why he did this, uh, it's been incredibly troubling, uh, particularly for a community uh, that I should mention, you know, the context of this happening uh, in the middle of what's going on in the Middle East. London and Windsor have quite a high Palestinian population. So this has been, you know, a horrific time for them to be going through this hate crime trial at the same time as many of them have lost family uh, overseas. Janelle, I want to thank you for an update uh, as we head into closing arguments. Thank you. Thanks, Emery. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this, be sure to subscribe here, or you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.